Hi, welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use a nav mesh with a waypoint system. In the previous set of tutorials to this one, I created a three part series on setting up waypoints and a NPC that navigates around those waypoints. And we used a finite state machine to control all of that. Now this time I'm reusing most of that code but I'm putting a nav mesh over the surface of the map. So you can see here, I've got this little green tank that we programmed previously to go between the waypoints, but now it's going between waypoints and avoiding obstacles. And I've had to do so little to this that you might be quite impressed with what the nav mesh system in Unity can do. The first thing you need to do is prepare your geometry in the scene for the nav mesh. The first thing to do is to grab hold of something that you want to be part of your nav mesh and over in the inspector you'll see right up in the top corner there's this little static and a drop down box let me just move this across here when you drop it down you want to tick navigation static for it now that's the ground plane if you're using this model that i've supplied or that unity also supplied then it will all be marked ready for the nav mesh let me have a look at the rock. So just click a rock here and have a look at what it's marked. And you'll see it's also included as a navigation static. Okay, so once you've done that with all the bits and pieces that are going to be part of your nav mesh, not your character or NPC. You don't want them involved. The waypoints even themselves, they're not part of the nav mesh either. So my little spheres that I use to represent where my waypoints are, they are not navigation static. So just the geometry of the map. Now once you've done that you need to open up the navigation window and that's under window navigation down here. I've got mine set up in with my inspector over here. Okay so you'll see several different tabs of navigation. There'll be object, there'll be bake, there'll be areas and there'll be agents. What we're particularly interested in at the moment is this bake. Now it's got a number of different values that you can set here and they show you what the agent's radius is going to be, what the height of the agent is. By the word agent we mean the NPC or in this case the little green tank. So the agent is the bot, the NPC, whatever, the artificially intelligent character that's going to navigate around on this nav mesh. And this is setting up the sizes of it so that a nav mesh can calculate where that character could go and where it can't go, as well as the maximum slope that it can go up. And you can change that here if you want it to go up steep slopes or you don't want it to go up very high slopes at all. And also the maximum step height. And there's other values for being able to drop off of a ledge and jumping distance and also all those sorts of things. Just leave it as the default to start with and then you can change things later. Now you might not have this blue area that I can see here because I've already pressed bake and that's this button here. Pressing bake will bake the nav mesh into the system which means that it goes and works out where your character will be able to navigate. Anywhere it's blue that you can see here is an area that is essentially walkable by the character or the tank. In this case, you can see that around the top here has been made walkable. Now, that's only going to be walkable if the tank can get up there. And if I have a look, I don't think there is any slope that it can get up there. But if you did put something in the scene to let it get up there, then it would go up there. All of the navigation for the tank now is being taken over by the nav mesh. So any code we wrote before for turning the tank or moving the tank forward towards things, that's all going to go and it's all going to be controlled by the nav mesh. Okay, so setting these values and then baking is pretty much all we're going to do for setting this up. The next thing is to make the tank a nav mesh agent. So select your character, in this case the tank, and in the inspector you want to add component and add the nav mesh agent. This is essentially the brains of your agent which will help it get around on the nav mesh. And in here is where you set 
its uh, steering behavior, so speed, angular speed, acceleration, stopping distance, avoidance distances as well, you know, how far away you're allowed to be from something. They're all in here. Again, this is just going to be left all as the default values in this case. Now, in order to have the agent know about the waypoints, we need to set the waypoints as a destination for the nav mesh agent that's attached to our tank. Now, if you remember back to the previous tutorial, we did a lot of the moving around in the patrol script, which is just here. And you can see that I've already updated the part that we need, and that is here. So rather than doing the slurping and the translating manually, we just have to set the destination for our agent and give it the current waypoint. And so we leave the calculation for waypoints and distances up here, but we just use the set destination method and give it a position that's somewhere within the boundaries of that nav mesh and our red waypoints are. This thing that we call agent in this script is the nav mesh agent that's attached to the tank. In order for the patrol script to access it, in the base, NPC base FSM script, I've added in a public unityengine.ai.navmesh agent called agent. So this is what we're using in the patrol script. And then setting that up down in the on state enter here, which just grabs hold of the nav mesh agent that we attached to the green tank. And that's what's doing all of the work for us. So if you save that code and then switch back into Unity and press play, you'll see the whole thing in action. So all I've done is added, what, two or three lines of code and set up the geometry in the scene to be a nav mesh. And we've changed the behavior of this waypoint system completely. Now, this agent is a little bit relaxed as far as when he gets through here, you'll see. When he gets to a waypoint, he kind of turns relaxedly. If he goes past a waypoint, he reverses a little bit. And it's quite sort of smooth and fluid and it looks a little bit too soft for a tank. So what you can do is go over into the tank settings and look at things like changing the speed. You might change the stopping distance, the acceleration, auto braking as well. You might turn that on or off. Um, stopping distance, we might put it at two. Let's turn up the angular speed to, let's say 200 and then have a play and see what it looks like and how it affects the turning. So this time he didn't get stuck back there. It's got a much nicer way of turning now when he gets to the thing. See how he doesn't turn and move at the same time? Yeah, so again, you know, it really is up to you on the behavior of your particular NPC. Lastly, if you want your tank to attack your player character, then it's a matter of going into the code where we've got that set up already. And in here, on state update, where we used to have the turning towards the opponent and then slurping and then translating, all we do is change that to agent.setDestination and set the destination to the opponent where the opponent is our player character. Remember, you don't want the player character to have anything to do with the nav mesh. So waypoints aren't part of the nav mesh and the player character isn't part of the nav mesh. They're just sort of locations on the nav mesh. Does that make sense? Uh, they've got to be within the nav mesh, otherwise your character NPC is never going to be able to find them or reach them. Okay, so with that in there, let's just play and have a look at the behavior now of our tank. So if we get close enough to our tank so we can trigger that, so he's now decided he's going to come and attack us. He's got a lot better moves than he had before as far as he can uh, slide around the corner. Now, my tank has the advantage that I can go through geometry. It doesn't have the physics on it, but he can't. He's got to stick to the nav mesh. So you'll see that he'll try to find his own way back to attack me. 
Now, this is all happening in the nav mesh. We haven't programmed any of this ourselves. So this is how powerful the nav mesh system is. And he's just going to keep trying to chase me until I manage to outrun him, at which point, looks like I already have, he's going to go back into the patrolling. Okay, so that is the very, very basics of setting up a nav mesh with an existing waypoint system. If you found this tutorial useful, and you want to get hold of the complete code for this, it's available to my Patreon subscribers. They get access to all of the project files that I produce in YouTube. If you sign up as a Patreon, then I'm quite happy to also give you free vouchers to any of my Udemy courses.